This is Impact with Don Wenner. Hey everyone, producer Kyle here. I am so excited to have the opportunity to introduce today's episode. Don Wenner, founder and CEO of DLP Capital and host of this very podcast, The Impact Podcast, sat down with none other than Hal Elrod. So today we have Hal Elrod on the show. Hal is on a mission to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time. As one of the highest rated keynote speakers in America, creators of one of the fastest growing and most engaged online communities in existence, and author of one of the highest rated, best selling books in the world, The Miracle Morning. Hal is also host of the highly acclaimed Achieve Your Goals podcast, creator of the Best Year Ever Blueprint Live Experience, and best selling author of 10 books in the Miracle Morning book series. Not to mention the author of the Ford for Don's book, Building an Elite Organization. How was a speaker at our Elite Mastermind and Prosperity events this past summer in Asheville, North Carolina? We do have another event coming up here in November in beautiful Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. To learn more and apply to attend, you can click the links in the show notes. Just a warning, we did have some technical difficulties during this, so we had to switch recording methods. So there is no video for this podcast and an audible shift in the audio at about the six minute mark that you'll probably notice. But nonetheless, Hal truly delivers, and this could be one of the most important episodes you can listen to. The three things listeners will take away from this episode are, number one, the power of Hal's life-changing practice called The Miracle Morning. Even if you are successful, humans have limitless potential, so there's always room for growth. Affirmations are so much more than flowery phrases to make yourself feel better for a few minutes. It's a complete realignment of your subconscious mind to affect your conscious behaviors and reach your biggest goals. Even through failure or any adversity, a positive outlook and a grateful mindset can push you through. So with that said, let's jump into Don's conversation with Hal Elrod. So Don Winter here, joined with my good friend, Hal Elrod. Welcome, Hal. Don, good to talk to you again, man. It's been a few weeks. Yes, it has. Since you were at our, our, our event in Asheville, which you did just an unbelievable job, I still am hearing people uh, talk about it. Um, I'm hearing more and more people saying can't change it, uh, yeah. and uh, which has uh, been, been pretty cool. I got, I got to start off with a really quick story for you and 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 everybody listening in. So if anybody hasn't yet read, read my book, uh, building an elite organization, you know, how, uh, was, uh, uh, you know, was, was willing and I'm very thankful of it to write, uh, the foreword, uh, of the book. And, and, and hopefully after this conversation, people understand where there's great similarities and where there's great, great overlap between what, what you, uh, uh, are, are known for, and you're an expert in many things, but what people best know you as being an expert in and in the concepts of building an elite organization. But, uh, but my my funny story is so so I wrote this book uh, building the organization which I've received not nearly the kind of success of Miracle Morning yet but um, but I've had some great success and and have have had lots of great feedback from from lots of people yet my wife has not yet read my book but she has read yours <laughs> uh, and my children who were at your presentation at my event uh, are constantly now quoting to to both uh, myself and my wife can't change it. Anytime they do something they're not supposed to do. Uh, my kids are eight and nine years old. So, so they're quoting you regularly and, and <laughs> know the miracle morning have seen, seen the movie, but none of them have yet read my book. And, and, uh, uh, but, uh, it's been really, really cool. I mean, they, they got the concepts even at eight, nine years old of, wow. of, uh, your, your speech on can't change it, which has been a really, really cool, uh, experience at, at, at home. So, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Hopefully they don't, you know, I'm sure they will, they'll misuse it again. You know, you get, they do something wrong, but dad can't change it. Relax. Remember what Hal said, you know, so exactly. I can see that being misused for sure. And, and it makes me <laughs> better. My, uh, my wife and kids have not read Miracle Morning. In fact, I, I talked to a lot of my author friends and it's consistent. They say, yeah, my, my spouse doesn't listen to or read anything I put out. So I guess. I guess <laughs> well, well uh, that, that is, that is helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. So uh, speaking, though, of your your most famous of your books, uh, The Miracle Morning, I, I'm honored to say I read it, it over 10 years ago now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been incredibly uh, meaningful for me. And, and, you know, I've been running uh, The Miracle Morning um, for you know 10 years, most of the last 10 years, not perfectly, as 
uh, I'll admit, but but most of the last 10 years I've run, you know, the habit of, of the Miracle Morning. Um, and I'd love for those who, I know many of our listeners are, are familiar, but but those who aren't, can you can you kind of kick us off here and, and give the overview of, of, of the Miracle Morning and, and the concept uh, to anybody not yet familiar? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Miracle Morning was something that, that I created for myself uh, very organically in 2008 when the economy crashed. I, I was a coach. I was coaching business owners and salespeople. And because everybody's businesses was impacted, I, I lost over half of my clients in about two months. And um, I went into a deep depression and, and nothing was working. And so I just, one day I was listening to a Jim Rohn audio and I heard him say, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. And so I figured if Jim Rohn is right, right, that resonated with me, our level of success will seldom exceed our level of personal development. I quantified it in my head. I went, well, on a scale of one to 10, I want level 10 success in every area of my life. I want to be as happy and healthy and wealthy and free as I possibly can. I thought, but where's my level of personal development on a scale of one to 10? And when I was honest with myself at the time, it was like a two or a three. Like I was in stress mode. The economy had crashed. I would wake up, work all day, go to bed and do it again. And I wasn't, there was no space. I, I had stopped exercising. I wasn't reading. And so I had the epiphany. I went, I'm going to create the most extraordinary, proven personal ritual in the history of humanity so that I can turn my life around as quickly as I possibly can. And so I just went to Google and I started Googling, what do millionaires do for personal development? What do CEOs do for personal development? What do world champions do for their personal development? And I was looking for the top, like the, the number one practice and I couldn't narrow it down to one. I had a list of six practices at, at the end of about an hour of research and I got overwhelmed and then I went, wait a minute. What if I did all of these? I was overwhelmed trying to figure out the best one because none stood above the others. I thought, what if I did all of these? So I set my alarm the next morning for an hour earlier. And normally that would only be done, you know, if I got like an early flight to catch. And I would normally be dreading waking up early. But it was interesting that I was excited. I went to bed. I kind of felt like a kid on Christmas Eve where I went to bed that night and I was like tossing and turning in a good way going, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning and, and try the six most you know, timeless, proven personal development practices. And that morning alarm goes off. I jump out of bed, go in the living room. Um, and at this time, you know, 2008, I'm, I'm deep in debt. It's been six months of like this downward decline. I was at a really bad place. I was depressed where as that morning I woke up and I didn't feel depressed. I felt really hopeful. And I went through all six practices, um, you know, kind of fudged my way through trying to meditate. Didn't really know how to do it. Right. Didn't really know how to visualize. But even doing a poor job of, of these six practices, I felt incredible. And I felt like if I start every day like this, it's only a matter of time before I'm able to turn my, my life around by becoming the person that I need to be to create the success that I want in my life. And, uh, and let me pause. That, that, that's the essence of the Miracle Morning is it's a daily practice that enables you to develop yourself, develop your mindset, your habits, your, the characteristics that you need to thrive in any or every area of your life. And I was thinking it'd be six to 12 months before I could gradually turn this around. And it was less than two months. In less than two months of doing the Miracle Morning, five to six days a week, I more than doubled my income. And keep in mind, that was in a declining economy. Like the economy got worse, but I got better. Doubled my income. I went from being in the worst shape of my life physically to deciding to run a 52 mile ultra marathon. You know, and Don, I had never run before. Like that wasn't a, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to do another race. No, this was, I've never run more than my required, you know, mile in PE class. But I thought, what a way to challenge myself. Like, I, I don't even know what that would be like. And ran the 50 mile ultra marathon and my depression went away in a matter of days. And because of how quickly my life, my life turned around, um, essentially I just, uh, I told my wife, I said, sweetheart, it feels like a miracle. This morning routine feels like a miracle. She goes, it's your miracle morning. And I go, yeah, I like that miracle morning. And so I started teaching it to my coaching clients. And, and long story short, um, almost all of my coaching clients, in fact, 13 out of 14, I believe it was, uh, implemented the miracle morning and couldn't like speak highly enough about the impact it made in their life. And that's when the light bulb went off. And I went, wait a minute. 
if this practice, this miracle morning thing changed my life and I was not a morning person, if it changed 13 out of 14 of my coaching clients lives and the majority of them were self-proclaimed not morning people, I thought this could change anyone's life. And that was when, you know, I started writing the book. It took me three years. I'm a slow writer. And, um, and then now it's, you know, two and a half million people around the world have read the miracle morning. Uh, millions of people practice it every day. And uh, you mentioned earlier that, you know, that there was a movie made about it and, and this and that, but, but yeah, that's the, the essence of the miracle morning. And of course, if you want to dive into those six practices, uh, we can do that or head wherever you want to go in the interview. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. Thank you. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, two and a half million uh, people, uh, at least, I, I think there's people who have heard or implemented the concept or even read the, the whole book because it's been so often, uh, you know, retaught now, including, you know, in my organization, we've been teaching it and we actually run a, a miracle morning every morning via Zoom um, that a number of our team members are, are a part of. And um, it's just, just incredible. So, yeah, so I'd love for you to, to, to talk about the, the savers, the, the six kind of components, but yeah. if you could uh, maybe, you know, frame it. So, you know, in general, I'm, I'm going to guess that, that a lot of the people listening here, you know, aren't in the situation you were in, in, you know, 2000, um, you know, 10 and 2009, where, you know, you were at kind of your, your, your per se, you know, bottom and were really, you know, struggling in every way, you know, I think generally probably people listening to this podcast here who are, you know, doing pretty well, right. Or doing, doing pretty good. And, and at least in, in certain areas yeah. of their life, they're, they're crushing it and they're looking just to get, get better and, 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 and do, do more. And, and maybe there's specific areas they're struggling. Can you talk, you know, for those who are, who are doing well, who don't need a radical change, just want to, want to, you know, dramatically, you know, want to continue to step up their game. How, how does Miracle Morning play in, in that situation? Yeah, there's two things that I'll share on that front. And um, the first is that, you know, obviously, human beings have unlimited potential. And there, there, you know, there is no end to that, right? It's not like we get to a point where we go, eh, I'm as good as I'll ever be, I'm not even gonna try to get better. Um, the, I think one of the best examples of this, I spoke, actually, I spoke at a GoBundance event, my first GoBundance event, I spoke at in 2015 or 16, you and I were just talking about that. Um, the uh, I was the 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 warm up act for the main event, which was Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. And after he and I spoke, I got to have dinner with Robert, and I gave him a copy of The Miracle Morning. And uh, it's funny, I had brought it to the dinner like it was under the table. I thought, oh, I kept in, insecure in my head, going, Robert's not going to read my little self published book on you know morning routines. And then I finally that 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 you know that old cliche adage, you know, you miss all the shots that you don't take. And uh, I thought, all right, I'll give it to him. I got nothing to lose. And so I pulled the book out from under the table, gave it to Robert. The Robert, your book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, changed my life. Least I could do, you know, is, is give you a copy of mine. And I figured he'd probably never read it. And I got an email uh, about a week or two later from his assistant and said, Robert has read The Miracle Morning three times. Uh, he and his wife are doing it, the practice uh, almost every single day. And he wants to have you on Rich Dad Radio. And, you know, my my jaw hit the floor. I mean, this is like, what, you know, one of my favorite authors. And uh, when he had me on the radio show, there's a few things. Um, the well, leading into it, I Googled, you know, what's Robert's net worth? I was just curious, right? It's $80 million. And, uh, and so Robert at the, you know, during the interview, I mean, he's obviously very brash and he just kept telling people, stop listening, go buy this book, stop listening, go buy this book. This will change your life. And, uh, and I, so I've always looked at Robert as an example of like, you know, whether you're struggling like I was and you're depressed and you're in debt and, you know, and you're, you're, you're each area of your life feels like it's crumbling and you're at rock bottom or you have a net worth of $80 million, great relationship with your wife, right? Or, or husband, um, anywhere in between, right? The miracle morning, again, it taps into that limitless potential that we all have. And the other thing, so that's the first thing that I want to share is kind of like, you know, it's good enough for Robert Kiyosaki, right? It's good enough for the rest <laughs> of us. Um, but Don, the other piece of it is this, is if you're listening to this, I, I want to make this personal to you. Like really ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, and this is one of the first things that we do in the book is that, you know, that the, the good old wheel of life assessment on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your level of success, satisfaction uh, in each area of your life. 
right? So yeah, there's the business. And, and it's very often that when we're thriving in our business, we, we tend to go all in because it feels good and it's easy and it's fun and the economy's rolling. Um, and we tend to neglect other areas of our life and we justify it. Well, I got to take advantage, strike while the iron's hot. So on a scale of one to 10, where is your health, right? Where is your health? How, how is your diet what, in terms of what you're eating, exercising, et cetera? On a scale of one to 10, how's your relationship with, with the people that you love most? You know, for me, I learned that I was a workaholic and I would neglect my young kids and focus on work, thinking it was all for them and saying, well, I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for them, I'm doing it for my wife. And, you know, I just took you guys on a vacation. Isn't that enough? I just bought you guys something. Isn't that enough? And realizing that all people really want is our time, right? Our loved ones, they just want our time. And so ask yourself again, on a scale of one to 10, in terms of your relationships with the people you love most. So the point is, right? So if we're really honest with every area of our life, usually there's going to be at least one area, probably more, maybe two or three, um, that we're not killing it at, at, you know, or crushing it at a level 10. And so to me, the Miracle Morning is about assessing what level 10 looks like in literally, Don, literally every single area of your life, clarifying what's level 10, and then dedicating your Miracle Morning to become the person that you need to be to achieve level 10 success in every single area. So you can be the happiest you've ever been, the healthiest you've ever been, have the most, uh, you know, beautiful, harmonious relationships that you've ever had, have the most freedom you've ever had, right? How's your freedom on a scale of one to 10? You know, business is crushing it, but how's your freedom? So, 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 so on and so forth. So point being that whether you are already thriving and you're killing it, um, you know, like Robert Kiyosaki was when he discovered the miracle morning, uh, but you still want to actualize your full potential. Um, or if you just get clear on, Hey, here's the areas of my life that, you know, uh, I'm like, I'm like a six in this area, maybe about four in this one. Uh, I really can focus my miracle morning on, uh, on those areas. So, so that's what I would say to anybody that's, uh, that's already doing really well right now. That, that's awesome. And, you know, we, we call it at DLP, the, you know, the eight F's of life, we call it faith, family, friends, freedom, fun, fulfillment, fitness, and finance. Those are the eight F's of life. And Beautiful. we actually do, do a lot of helping people do the, you call the wheel of life, right? Do the life assessment and analyze your, your life in, in each of those, those areas. And, and I always say, you know, real success comes from, right, from, from achieving success in all of those areas at, at the same time. And um, for the, for the most, you know, driven people, and it, it's definitely the minority of people who are out there really focused on all of these areas and intentional about um, about being both a, you know great at, in their career as well as being a great father and, and husband and leader in their church and, and so forth and taking care of themselves physically all at the same same time. But one of the, the cool things for, for those who are saying, hey, I am doing great in all those areas is is continuing to be able to raise raise the bar, um, continue to be able to say, right, what, what could I do better? How do I how do I be more intentional? Um, how can I deliver more, you know, value and show my wife I, I cherish her her more, and that's been one of the coolest things for me of the intentionality of of the savers, um, and, and helping you constantly look at how you can how you can improve. So, um, yeah, love love for you to explain kind of that that concept to everybody here, um, and uh, and and uh, you know, you know it's, just, it's just amazing. So I'll just turn it back to you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the savers. Um, uh, so those are the six practices. It's an acronym that represents the six practices of the Miracle Morning. And just to be clear, the acronym didn't, I didn't start on day one with an acronym. I was writing the book one day. I was, I was frustrated. I couldn't think of how to tie these six practices together in a meaningful way. And my wife goes, why don't you get a thesaurus and see if you can swap out some of the words and, and see if you can make an acronym. Um, and I'm, I'm glad she did because the, the savers, um, these six practices and that acronym is so appropriate. Like I, I call them the lifesavers. And to me, these are the six practices that will save us from missing out on the life that we all deserve to live that level 10 in every single area. The first S is for silent. So that's your meditation and, or your prayer time. It's your opportunity to get quiet, to clear your mind so that you can harness the wisdom of, you know, God or infinite intelligence or the last book that you read. But it, but, but when we are, when we're, when we're, our mind is filled with noise, whether it's, you know, actual noise, people talking, um, or if it's, you know, visual noise, digital noise, right, checking emails and such, the, the, 
those brilliant ideas, there's no space for them to enter into your consciousness. And so the miracle morning or that first S and savers that spending that time meditating, and I had never meditated before, but like you can look it up. There's over 1400 scientific studies that prove the benefits of meditation and they prove the physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual benefits. It, it's not just some, you know, woo-woo practice that meditation is. And I think most people now, it's, it's become very popular. Um, in fact, one of the things that turned me on to meditation was an article that was about Fortune 500 CEOs who swear by meditation. So your miracle morning starts with you quieting your mind and getting calm, getting centered. Uh, it also lowers your cortisol levels, which lowers your stress. So if you want to think clearer, if you want to have more mental clarity uh, and you want to even live longer, uh, meditation is, is crucial in the morning. And again, a lot of people during their silence, they will also do prayer uh, or a combination of the two or one or the other. The A in savers is for affirmations. And, and I wanted to take just a, a, a couple of minutes to do a quick kind of training here. Uh, I did this for your group um, at the event. The, the way affirmations have been taught over the years, I think, is, does a disservice to us. And I think it's given affirmations a bad rap where a lot of people roll their eyes and go, affirmations, come on, I'm not just going to pump myself up with affirmations. There's one of two problems with the way that they've been taught. Number one is we're taught to lie to ourselves until we believe it. So, for example, if you want to be wealthy and you're struggling financially, we're taught to just say, I am wealthy. I am wealthy or, you know, or I am a millionaire. Right. But if you're not. If you're not the thing you're affirming, then you're, in essence, you're lying to yourself, right? Depending on the context of the affirmation. Or if you want to lose weight, right? You're, you're taught to say, I am thin. You know, I, I, have a, I have a chiseled physique. I have a six pack, right? <laughs> but if that's not your reality, then, then what, the truth will always prevail. You've got to affirm truth. You can't affirm some lie saying, I am blank, if you are not yet blank. So the solution to that is simply, I am committed to blank, right? It's a very slight distinction or difference in the language, but it's a night and day meaning. Saying I am wealthy if you're not versus I am committed to becoming wealthy. I'm committed to earning a million dollars this year. I'm committed to right, being financially free by the time I'm 45, whatever it is. It's I am committed to blank. The second problem with affirmations is that we're, we're, we're given this flowery passive language that promises almost like a magical result. So you may have heard an affirmation like this. It's a very popular affirmation. I am a money magnet. Money flows to me effortlessly and in abundance. That, that's not how money works, right? We, most of us know that intellectually. I think the reason people like that affirmation is it gives them temporary relief from their money woes, right? Like if you're stressed about money, and you sit there and you close your eyes, you go, I am a money magnet. Money is flowing to me effortlessly and in abundance. All of my money problems will be solved, right? Like that might give you a temporary delusional relief going, ah, oh, that feels good. That feels better than the stress I was just feeling. But that's not gonna improve your bank account balance. So I'm gonna give you four really quick steps on how to, actually we'll do three, I'll, I'll condense the last two how to create affirmations that produce results because Don, I know you're results oriented. I'm imagining most of your listeners are. I am like, I don't just want to affirm something to trick myself into feeling good for a few minutes. I want to affirm something that's going to realign my subconscious mind in a way that's going to direct, to direct my conscious behaviors in a way that's going to produce meaningful, measurable results. So number step one, and I already said this a few minutes ago, Affirm what you're committed to, right? So we don't get what we want in life just because we want it. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I want or I am blank. You have to affirm what you're committed to because that is directing your subconscious mind to be committed, which is what's necessary to take the actions that are going to get you the results that you want. So step one, I'm committed to blank. And I always add to the end of that, no matter what, there is no other option. Step two, affirm why it is deeply meaningful for you. So why are you committed to blank? Why are you committed to that? What is that going to do for you, for your family, et cetera? What are the benefits? So, right, and you can do those in bullet points. It could be step one or step two. Could be, there could be three or four or five different reasons why you are fully committed to do whatever it takes to create that result. And then step three is affirm 
what you'll do and when you'll do it. Affirm what you'll do and when you'll do it to ensure that you move in the direction of the thing you're committed to. So when I was trying to beat cancer, and I know we haven't talked about this, but um, you know, four or five years ago, actually, when it'll, it'll be five years this December, I was diagnosed with a really rare aggressive form of leukemia. And I was given a 20 to 30% chance of surviving, which pretty grim odds. You know, it was a 70 to 80% chance I was going to die. And my daughter was seven at the time. My son was four. So naturally, as a parent, it's like, you know, you're thinking, oh, my God, there's a 70 to 80% chance that I'm going to die and leave my kids without a dad. And I doubled down on my miracle morning. And I made my entire miracle morning about healing from cancer. So I filtered the, the, all of the savers were the books I was reading, the affirmations I was doing, the visualization I was doing, the meditation, all of it was centered around beating cancer. And so I following these three steps, here's what my affirmations look like. Step one, right? Affirm what you're committed to. I'm committed to beating cancer and living to be 100 plus years old alongside Ursula, Sophie, and Halston, my wife and kids. No matter what, there is no other option. And I'll tell you, when I experienced fear, which happened on a regular basis, whenever I would think about what was happening, or I was in the hospital on chemo, I, was in, I had infections, my temperature was 104 degrees, I mean, on and on and on, the fear would seep in. And I would think, God, what if I, what if I die? What if this is it? What if this is my last night in the ER and I'm not going to make it past this one? And I would pull out, I had my affirmations on my phone, so they were always with me. And I'd pull them out and go, with resolve, with conviction, with intention, with passion, I would say, I am committed to beating cancer and living to be 100 plus years old alongside Ursula, Sophie, and Halston, no matter what, there is no other option. And that was how I was able to override fear with faith. So Amazing. for you, whatever the outcome is that you want to achieve in any area of your life, right? That's step one. I am committed to blank, no matter what, there is no other option. And then step two was the why. Why was it meaningful? And I had four or five bullet points for the people in my life that mattered most. I said, I'm committed to beating cancer for Ursula because I promised her forever in a day. I'm committed to beating cancer for my mom because she doesn't deserve to lose another child. I had, my sister died when I was younger. I'm committed to beating cancer for my dad because he gave up everything to save me. I'm committed to beating cancer for Sophie and Halston because they need a father in their life to love and guide them for the rest of their life. And I'm committed to beating cancer for myself because I deserve to live a long, happy, healthy life. And last but not least, I am committed to beating cancer for the millions of people who are themselves battling cancer or some other disease and were not blessed with the knowledge or resources that I have and th that I can help them to ease their suffering and improve their life. So Dawn, as you can imagine, the, that, that was the juice, like that was the fuel, those reasons why, that second part of the affirmations when I affirmed why I was committed to be, beating cancer for the people that I loved most, there was no other option for me. Like that reaffirmed, I will do whatever it takes. And then last but not least, step three, what will I do and when? And I had a list of, I did every holistic practice that I, that I possibly could in addition to my chemotherapy. I detox my body in ways that probably 99% of chemo patients do not do. I did coffee enemas three times a week, right? It doesn't get any more like outside the box, uncomfortable doing coffee enemas. And I'm not even going to go to Google that what that is, but you probably can guess. Um, I took 70 supplements a day. I juiced almost every single day. I went and did ozone therapy. I did ozone sauna. I did lymphatic massage. I did acupuncture. I did all of my miracle morning meditating. I read books constantly on how to beat cancer naturally. I did everything I possibly could. And so those affirmations, I'm telling you, without those, I probably, I don't even know what would have happened, but I probably would have mentally and emotionally broke like many cancer patients do. I would have lived in fear because the fear visited me every day, but every day I pulled out the affirmations. I said, no, 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 no. There's no, th thanks fear for trying to keep me safe, but there's no room for you in my consciousness. I'm committed to beating cancer, right? And living to be hundred, I'm committed for these reasons. And here's what I'm committed to doing. No matter what, there is no other option. And so you can apply that to any or every area of your life. And just for the last piece on the affirmations is, um, I have affirmations like that 
for every goal that I have. Every goal I have, I've got, it starts out with, I am committed to blank, whatever that goal is, no matter what, there is no other option. And then I've got the bullet points of why I am absolutely committed to that. And then I've got the what I will do and when and to ensure that I achieve that goal. When I was in sales and I would break sales records, I was following that formula. And so I encourage you to apply that for every single one of your goals. Awesome. That's it's amazing. And you know, I know we're only on, on A here right now, but you know, quick quick question. I mean, what, what's amazing to me is I I think to, you know, you've been teaching on this topic. I know the book came out, I think, in 2012. Um, but I know you were teaching this to your coaching clients and stuff while you were writing the book. So for 10, 10 years now, you know, plus or minus, right? You've been you've been teaching this and living this and and doing this. And I can just still hear uh, the incredible passion uh, behind the, the power of this and what it's done for you and, and what you know it's done for, for so many others. Um, so so what, what you know, as you kind of go through explain this, I'd love to kind of hear, being somebody who's been, you know, uh, doing this not as well as, as certainly you have, um, but has been uh, getting the benefits of this incredible practice for, for so many years, you know, what, what are the, what has changed or what have been the haws or what's different today than when you set out on this, you know, for those who are running a, a morning routine already, um, doing a lot of these things, what's, what's, what's uh, kind of improved or what are the, the uh, haws of not only doing it, but teaching it and hearing from others and uh, living this for, for a decade now? So what's interesting is the, the, the basics are what I found most effective. Um, meaning uh, about a year ago, when 20, mid-2020, I had been on chemo for going on two and a half years, I think. And wow. there's something called chemo brain. And chemo brain uh, is it's a very real thing. It, it sounds kind of, you know, I don't know, sounds kind of cute, clever, whatever. Um, I started, I lost my ability to think and communicate clearly, which considering my line of work is as an author and a speaker, um, that started to send me into a spiral of anxiety. I felt I would get nervous to talk to people because I couldn't think clearly. Um, and, uh, and, and I didn't know what to do. And I just, I kind of, I started to get depressed in a way I've never been depressed before where I would gone out and this is so unlike me. Like when I was depressed in 2008, it was kind of like, oh man, money's tight. I don't know what to do. This sucks. But, but, but last year it was every day talking myself out of killing myself. It was, and, and there were times when I would literally ask myself, how could I commit suicide in a way that would not negatively affect my family? And thankfully there was no good answer to that, you know, but I would literally go down the rabbit. I'm like, well, maybe if I crash my car, so it looked like an accident. And, uh, but, and I, and I left videos for my kids teaching the most, I mean, I literally, it was, I was mm -hmm. out of my mind. And, um, and then I asked myself one day, I went, why is my miracle morning not allowing me to handle this depression? And number one was I was on poisonous chemotherapy that was messing with the bio, my biochemistry. But number two, I examined my miracle morning in 2000, uh, uh, last year, 2020. And then I pulled out all my journals from 20, 2008, 2009. And I, I looked at the discrepancies between the two and I had gotten way too far away from the basics. So essentially what I wrote about the miracle morning is, you know, that was, I wrote that back in 2009, 10, 11. Um, the basics to me are what are most effective. Um, sticking with the basics, sticking with the savers, doing them in the right order. I had, I had come so far away from my original miracle morning um, you know, that's true in anything, right? If you're in sales, I, back when I was in sales and I would get in a slump, my manager, my mentor would, would, would remind me, go, are you following your, your, the, the scripts that you, you know, that you got when you were in training? I go, no, I, I don't use those. I'm, I'm way beyond those, you know? And then I would go back and use the scripts and my slump would turn around and things would fix themselves. So I know that's not a sexy answer, but honestly, um, it's like most things in life. Like if we stray too far from the fundamentals, uh, then we, we tend to, our results tend to stray, stray away as well. And so for me, it's really sticking with, with the basics. And I'll say the, the only other thing that is, is just, it blows my mind is, you know, nine years, 10 years after the book was written, um, every day, for example, in the Miracle Morning community, which is a Facebook group with a few hundred thousand members, every day seeing people that are just discovering the Miracle Morning and seeing things like, I've been doing the Miracle Morning for a month and a half, and it had saved my marriage. 
or I'm do the miracle morning for three weeks and I'm no longer suicidal or do the miracle morning you now for, for, you know, a thousand days in a row. And in the last, you know, or, or a year in a row, consecutively for a year in the last year, I've had the best year of my life. I, I've had the biggest income year of my life. I finally wrote a book. I finally ran a marathon, you know? And so to me, it's what the miracle morning does for, for people is it enables any of us, really to tap into our full potential, to dedicate time each day intentionally becoming the best version of ourselves. And that spills over into everything. So your marriage, if, as you become better, your marriage becomes better. As you become better, your business becomes better. As you become better, your, you know, your mental health, your happiness becomes better. Like every area of your life improves in proportion to you improving. So, so it's, it's amazing, uh, phenomenal answer. So before you go back to, you know, uh, giving us the, the, the last uh, four uh, components of, of the Savers routine, you know, I often think that, you know, happiness, which is, you know, one of the four crises that we're really focused on um, at, at, at DLP in making an impact on. And, you know, you, you hit on it there with your own, and I appreciate the vulnerability there of sharing, you know, challenges you went through during, you uh, uh, your, your battle with, with cancer and your chemo, but they say right now, Americans are at the highest level of, of unhappiness, you know, ever. We have somewhere around 40% of Americans struggling with some sort of mental illness, by far the largest being depression. And, and I often believe and have thought and, and talked to others about that, you know, happiness is so often about the perception of one's life, right? So certainly this routine and yes. it is, it will change, you know, certain things about your life and those habits will lead you making healthier decisions and being more intentional with your wife as an example, but often it's just your, your perception about what's going on in your life and how you're doing and that, that can, that can make a tremendous difference. Can you kind of touch on that? And, and is that something you, you kind of agree with and how, how do you kind of think about, you know, the, the effect of, of kind of your own perception on your own life and how that plays in with, with the miracle morning? Yeah, Don, I'm so glad that you asked about that. Um, because I believe that's arguably the most important thing right now. And it really has been for the last year. In fact, when I was going through my depression last year, I always asked myself, how can me getting through this, whenever I face a challenge, it's how can me getting through this benefit myself and other people? And I went, oh, maybe the reason I'm at such a low place right now is because of what's going on in the world, right? This was like mid-COVID. I thought, and how the mental health crisis that, that is, that's already existing, but that's brewing and that's going to be a fall, you know, the fallout of the economic, you know, shutting down small businesses and all of that. I thought this, the, we might see a, a mental health crisis like we've never seen before. And so my focus, and, and I really want to, yeah, I really want to help in any way I can right now on this is, is what I call inner freedom. Uh, I believe that inner freedom is arguably the most important area of focus right now for all of us, unless you mental health and you if you know you don't have any stress or you're happy or whatever but for all the people you're talking about the 40 percent of americans that are struggling um it starts with inner freedom and, and inner freedom is our ability to choose how we feel in any given moment or 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 more broadly put our ability to choose how we experience any given moment of our lives and it's not what happens to you it's not what's happening to you it's your interpretation as you said it's how you're looking at your life when i was in the hospital with cancer now yes i had depression a year ago three years into my cancer journey but that was the first time i experienced depression during that cancer journey and the first eight months i was in the hospital almost the entire time i would go in for a week out for a few days and then i would go i was in and out of the hospital almost the entire time to the point where i got an apartment next to the hospital and the point is um I had cancer, but I couldn't change it. And you mentioned that earlier that your kids are using that, that can't change it philosophy that, that I shared at, the, at your event. It's the idea that when we focus on things that are out of our control, meaning things that we cannot change, which by the way is anything or everything that's ever happened to you. So if you're feeling emotional pain over something that's in the past, whether it happened five minutes ago or, or five months ago or five decades ago, that is self-inflicted. 
That's the first realization that for me, and that I'm inviting you to consider is that every painful emotion you've ever experienced is self-created by your resistance to your reality. In other words, when something happens, it is as it is. You label it good or bad, right? Oh, that's bad. I didn't want that to happen. And now you resist that. I, I wish it weren't happening. I wish it were different. I wish he were different. I wish she didn't do that. I wish our president were different. I wish the economy were different. I wish there wasn't COVID. I wish, I, right? It's our wishing and wanting, which is resisting, our wishing and wanting something to be different that's out of our control that causes us to feel emotional pain. And to the degree that we wish or want something to be different that's out of our control determines the degree of emotional pain that we feel. Again, it's the degree of resistance to our reality that determines the emotional pain. No one ever taught us that. I mean, mo for most of us, I, I learned that, you know, I forgot what book I read. Oh, it was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle when I was 20 years old. Um, I, I was fortunate to learn that lesson really young. But for the most part, we don't learn that. We think that the cause of our emotional pain is something outside of ourselves and we justify it. Of course, I'm upset. Look at what happened to me. Of course, I'm, I'm sad. Look at what I lost. Of course, I'm angry. Did you, did you hear what she said to me? We always point the finger at someone or something outside of ourselves as to why we feel the way that we do. But that's not reality. And the easiest way to understand that that's not reality is just imagine two different people, the same adversity or tragedy or trauma befalls both people exactly the same. Person number one resists reality, said, this, no, this isn't fair. I don't deserve this. I'm depressed. I'm scared. I'm angry. I wish this were different. I'm not accepting this. Person number two says, yeah, this is the hardest thing I've ever had happen to me, but you know what? I can't change it. So there's no, there's no value in wishing I could. There's no point in me feeling sorry for myself or feeling sad or angry. You know what? I'm going to accept it exactly as it is, and I'm going to take this challenge on, and I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to grow from it, and I'm going to come out on the other side better than I have ever been before, and then I'm going to take that growth and those lessons, and I'm going to go share them with other people, starting with my, my loved ones, and then, and then anybody that'll listen, and I'm going to help a lot of other people as a result of me enduring those difficult time of my life and I'll be better as a result of all of this. So wait a minute. The person number one that says this tragedy, this trauma, this adversity is the reason I'm emotionally devastated. How can that be true if person number two is going through the exact same thing and they're not emotionally devastated? It's not the circumstance that causes our emotional turmoil. It's not what he said or she said or what did or didn't happen. It's not the state of the world. It's all an inner game. And step one is you have to own that. You have to say that how I feel in any given moment is always my decision. It's always my choice. Now, now to be fair, in the moment, something happens, you react initially, you, oh my God, I'm, right? But as soon as you take a breath and stop and go, okay, wait a minute, I'm feeling emotionally distraught because I was unconscious as to how I was reacting to this new thing, this, I just, this thing going on in my life. But, 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 but ultimately, once you're aware that I have to own my inner world, my feelings, that's up to me. You have to ask yourself, how do I wanna feel? How do I wanna feel? Do I wanna continue feeling angry? Do I wanna continue feeling depressed? Do I wanna continue feeling scared and stressed? And for most of us, the answer is no, I wanna feel calm. I want to feel at peace. I want to feel happy. Because here's the thing. Life is difficult for everybody in to different degrees. Life is difficult for everybody. You got to decide, are you going to be person number one that allows your outer world, the things you can't control to dictate your inner world, how you feel, your quality of life? Or are you going to be person number one that when things go wrong, you, you react in alignment with that. You become distraught. Or are you going to be person number two 
when things go wrong, when you're facing adversity, when you've suffered trauma or tragedy, are you going to accept life exactly as it is, not resist reality, not wish it were different if it can't be different, accept reality as it is, take proactive steps to if you, you do what you can to make things better, but ultimately decide that even when you face tragedy or trauma or the world seems like it's going crazy and falling apart and there are people in power that are doing things to you that are out of your control, are you going to be person number one or person number two that says, I'm going to accept what I can't change, be at peace with life exactly as it is, and then I'm going to ask myself in any given moment, how do I want to feel? I want to feel happy. Therefore, I'm not going to let my outer world determine my inner world. I am going to determine my inner world. I'm going to consciously choose how I feel and how I experience my life. And when I had cancer, I mean, there's videos of me online and, you know, I did journals along the way and I'm bald and I'm in pain. And I've got an eye infection where my face is swollen twice the size. And I'm still smiling. There's a video of me online. It was in the movie. I'm bawling. I'm in so much pain. I've had migraines for 11 days because they stuck a needle in my spine and they missed it and hit a nerve. And I'm in horrific pain and I'm bawling. And I'm saying, this doesn't change how grateful I am for this moment and this pain because it's part of my life. And I've chosen consciously to enjoy every moment of my life, even those that are tragic that are that are painful it doesn't matter i choose how i live i experience my life i choose how i feel so i know i'm getting excited but um but anyway but that's my answer is that if you're listening to this number one own how you feel it's up to you number two decide how you want to feel and and number three align your thoughts your words and your actions with how you've chosen to feel how you've chosen to experience life align your thoughts, words, and actions. And Dawn, it's such a beautiful circle here. With, that's what the Miracle Morning does. Every day, it gives you a chance to align your thoughts, words, and actions with who you're committed to being, how you're committed to feeling, how you're committed to showing up for yourself, for those that you love, and those that you lead. Wow. Well, I mean, that was that was incredible, uh, incredible uh, lesson there that we sort of stumbled stumbled upon here in our conversation. But man, that was that was the worth the the time uh, investment here from anybody listening for for sure. And and I know you and I have never I don't think I've ever spoken about this, but you know that whole concept uh, is is why you know I preach heavily on not watching the news. Right, it, it, nothing good can come mm. from from watching it, the negativity and the people I know who are happier generally are people who don't watch the news. You'll never not know something that's actually important that you need to actually act upon. Um, but I, I wanted to so yeah. thank you for that. And, and I know I, we've been talking about the Miracle Morning, um, which is what you're most, I'll say, famous for, which for good reason, because it's an absolute incredible uh, book. You also wrote another incredible book, The, the Miracle Equation, which is we were chatting about before, before, you know, the daily process for goal achievement where the rubber meets the road, which I love the sound of it. Highly, highly recommend uh, people read that, especially if you've already read Miracle Morning. But you also, as you were kind of giving that over, you touched on the, the Miracle Morning Facebook group. And, and I did just want to make sure everybody hears that and highlights that because I believe very often and COVID has accelerated this, people are unhappy is that they're, they lack true connection. And people are out trying to, to find a uh, connection. And, and uh, you know, I, I have not uh, personally been involved in your, your uh, Facebook community, but it sounds like, you know, a great way for people to connect with other people going through this journey and, and supporting one another, um, uh, so, which is pretty awesome. And then you also referenced the movie, which is also called The Miracle Morning, which is incredible, especially to watch with your family. If you have young kids, it's just, just an incredible a way to further cement the, the importance and message of, of what The Miracle Morning can do. Um, but I want to turn it back to you here to kind of wrap, wrap a, us up here. And hey, touch on any of that that I, I just kind of covered, ways that people can get in touch with you, ways that they can, you know, learn more, uh, connect with others. And then if you can, you know, maybe just roll into, we'll have to do sort of the faster version of it, but, but kind of touch on at least the other four components of, of savers here. Um, and then, of course, anybody wants to learn more, you know, there's lots of ways I just covered and, and how we'll wrap us up with to learn more and put this incredible uh practice and discipline habit into into practice in, in your life so I'll turn, turn it back to you 
Yeah, thank you, John. Um, the yeah, the savers, uh, the, the the affirmations one I always spend a lot of time on. I can run through the the final four. Um, so there's visualization, right? Which here's all you have to ask yourself in terms of, ah, should I try visualization? The world's most successful athletes of all time, from you know Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods or Olympians, Michael Phelps, they all swear by visualization, right? It's about rehearsing yourself performing at your best every day before you actually go into the day so that when it's actually time to get on the phone and cold call, for example, or go out for a run when you're like me and you hate running, you visualize yourself engaged in the, I, the necessary activities you need to do each day. And you visualize yourself doing them in an optimal emotional state so that you're mentally rehearsing doing those things in that state. And it really is helpful when there's things that you don't want to do. Um, that for example, I mentioned, you know, I, I was training for that ultra marathon. I hated running. So every morning I'd visualize myself going for a run and I would visualize smiling and I would visualize myself like enjoying it. And I would smile while I visualize I'm doing it right now. Um, and, and then what happened is when it was time to run, instead of going, oh, I don't want to run. I was actually compelled to run because I had mentally rehearsed it in a way that was compelling. And you can apply this to every area of your life. On the weekends, I do it with my kids. I visualize engaging with my wife and kids, like in a really playful and fun way. So that when they come downstairs, I'm not like, oh man, they interrupted my miracle morning. I'm like, oh, I've already visualized you coming downstairs. And I visualized what I was going to do. I rehearsed it. So visualization is key to perform at your best personally and professionally. The E in savers is for exercise. No rocket science there, but uh, just because you go to the gym in the afternoon or evening, or even if you're not, just all you need is five to 10 minutes in the morning to get the blood flowing, to wake up your lymphatic system, get the blood and oxygen to your brain. So you think clearer, you feel better, you have more energy. So, you know, for, for me, I go for a bike ride in the morning around um, the neighborhood and it's just, it's five to 10 minutes and it gets my legs working. It gets the blood pumping and I enjoy it. I get fresh air. So exercise should absolutely be part of something you do first thing in the morning to get yourself in that peak energetic state. And again, get that blood and oxygen to your brain so you think clearer, you feel better. The R in Sabres is for reading. No rocket science there either, right? Just every morning reading. If you think about this, if you just read 10 pages in the morning, right? That's 3,650 pages in the, a year. That's 18, 200 page books. And again, you read a book on marriage. Your marriage can be transformed from one book. You want to be happier. You want to be healthier. You want to make more money. You want to save more money. You want to invest better. You, right? There's a book for that, right? You want, you want to uh, align your business to be more effective, right? There's a book called Building an Elite Organization. That book, right? If you want to grow your business and you want to build an elite organization, right? There's a book for that. That's the point. And so we're all one book away from transforming any area of our life. And the final S in Sabres is for scribing, which is a fancy word for writing or journaling. And every day I just write down uh, usually three things I'm grateful for. And as I write each one, I close my eyes with my hand on my heart and I pause and I feel that gratitude as deeply and profoundly as I can. So it really impacts my life and it reminds me I have... I am so blessed. I am so blessed to live this life that I have. And then I write down the top three things I need to get done in order priority for the day. Because like many of us, I've got, you know, a to-do list that's got 20 things on it. And on any given day, if I don't clarify the top three in priority, I might check off number 17 in order priority, the number 13, and then 20, right? We tend to gravitate toward the activities on our to-do list that have the the least significant consequences because they're easy and they're not stressful. So every day I go, okay, I got 20 things on my to-do list, but what's the single most important thing that I need to get done that will make the biggest impact and move the needle on my life or business? Um, and I start there and I'm not allowed to move to number two until I get number one done. So that's my scribing every morning for the most part. It's what are the three things I'm grateful for and really feel them. And then what are the top three tasks I need to complete today in order of priority. Those are the six practices, the savers of the miracle morning. And to quote Robert Kiyosaki, he said, Hal, before I read the miracle morning, 
every successful person on the planet, I'd be willing to bet, does at least one of the savers and swears by it. He said, but I had never met anyone that did all six of these ancient best practices. He said, I now do them almost every single day and they've transformed my life. And so any one of the savers will change your life. When you do all six, it really feels like a miracle. You see these amazing results. And I'll close out by touching on what you said a few minutes ago about the Miracle Morning community. I invite everybody, you know, yes, you can get the book on Amazon or watch the movie on Amazon Prime. I invite everybody to join the Miracle Morning community on Facebook. 312,000 members from over 100 countries wow. that wake up every day and support each other. And, you know, you, you said it really well, Don, and I think it's important. People right now are missing that connection. And they're people that they used to connect with, friends and family, now there's division between them. And it's like, oh, you have different beliefs than I do. And now we're no longer speaking. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really astounding and, and tragic to me. But if you want to connect with like-minded people that are loving and supporting each other, there's no talk on politics or vaccines or math or any of the division, you know, the topics that are causing such division in our country. The Miracle Morning, it's about, hey, do, do you want to wake up every day and dedicate time to becoming the best version of yourself? Do you want love and support? Do you want to share your challenges and get feedback from people that have been doing the Miracle Morning for you know a long time? Highly recommend everybody come and join the community. Well, that's been incredible, Hal. And, and so again, to recap, Miracle Morning, The Miracle Equation is other phenomenal book to put this into, into action where the rubber meets the road. Community, you heard about the, the movie. And then for, for all of... Um, for anybody who's not already aware, you know, we developed um, a, a journal here called the Elite Journal, um, which really is a way to, to put this put this into action. It, it ties in with the scribing component, uh, laying out your top three for the day, et cetera. So a great actionable tool um, to help put this into in, into play. So, so Hal, it's been an incredible honor and, and a privilege to have you on here. You in, inspire uh, so many, and, and I have no doubt you inspired many more here today. Um, so many nuggets. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do. Um, and uh, uh, looking forward to, I have no doubt, uh, looking to have you come back on here again and instill some more wisdom um, to this uh, to this group as you're doing with, with so many others. So thank you. Awesome, brother. Appreciate you, Don. Thank you so much for all that you're doing, man. At your event, I just was blown away by your leadership and how much you care about all of the 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 aspects of people's lives that most, you know, real estate trainers or business gurus don't talk about right it's all about the deal the money etc and and i was so pleased that you're you're talking about people and their happiness and their emotional well-being and their family and the things that really matter most and using the your expertise in the real estate arena and the investing arena as a vehicle for people to be able to provide for their families so that we can have happiness and joy and connection and freedom so Thank you for uh, for going above and beyond. Well, well, thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate that those kind words, and and that's Hal Rod. Please get in touch with them if you haven't already. Read, read the book. Uh, read, read Miracle Equation. Join his community. It will change your life. So thanks, buddy. This has been Don Wenner on the Impact Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. You can check out our other episodes by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts, or on YouTube, or check us out online by going to Impact with Don. I encourage and challenge you to make an impact.